Welcome back AP Statistics students. We're going to talk about section 2 of chapter 11. We're still talking about inference for categorical data, but we have moved on from the chi-square goodness of fit test to some other types of chi-square tests. And the types that we're going to be looking at are homogeneity and uh, independence. All right, so by the end of this section, we should be able to calculate expected counts conditional distributions and contributions to the chi-square to statistic. This is similar to what we did in the recent section, the last section, except it's good this, it's going to be slightly different because instead of working with a one-way table, we're going to be working with two-way tables. We're going to need to check our conditions for inference, just as we did before, actually perform the test for both homogeneity and for independence to answer our research questions in homogeneity whether the distribution of a categorical variable is different for the different populations that we're looking at or the different treated groups that we're looking at when we do the test for independence we want to determine whether or not there is a relationship or an association between two categorical variables and then we're going to do a follow-up analysis based on the components so that means we need to have access to the individual com contributions to the chi-square test statistic and then we want to be able to interpret computer output because we know that very often those appear on exams at the end of the year and so we need to have a good way to interpret them know what each of the values mean on there as well as be able to interpret in context so if you remember from chapter 10, that was all about comparing two different groups or two different populations. And we are doing basically the same thing here, except we want to compare more than two at a time. And the chi-square will allow us to do that. We're going to be formatting it in a two-way table. And the two-way table will have one variable in the columns and a different variable in the rows. As always, remember you're more than welcome to pause the video and take notes on any one of these screens as we discuss these different types of tests. Okay, so we have an example that starts in your textbook on page 696, and it's all about the idea of does music playing have an effect or an impact on the different types of wine that is purchased. And the types of music are French accordion music, Italian string music, or no music playing. And then we observed which types of wines were purchased when each of those different types of music, those are the three treatments, were, were being played. So what we want to be able to do is calculate the conditional distribution of the types of wines sold for each treatment. So the each treatment is going to be our denominator. Then we're going to need to show that or display that data using an appropriate graph and then determine whether they're the same or they're different. And we're going to start this just through observation, kind of analyzing the graph and analyzing the different proportions, and then we'll move on to the chi-square test for homogeneity. So here's our two-way table. The music playing is the treatment and the wine purchased is our response variable, if you will. And these are the proportions for each of the different types of wine purchased when no music was playing, when French accordion music was playing, and when Italian string music is playing. So notice the denominator in each of the cases is the denominator for that column total of, of how many um, were purchased when no music was playing, the total is 84, and what types of wines were purchased when no music was playing, so we calculate the proportions for each one of those. When we put it in a graph, of course, uh, a picture is worth a thousand words, so we can see how the different music affected the different purchases of wine. So remember, each one of these graphs represent the, the treatment or what type of music was playing, and the bars represent what uh, the quantity of wine and what we've done is be, we've sold or I'm sorry we've shown it as a percent so these are relative values and that compares apples and apples because otherwise we'd have different quantities and the counts would throw us off so we wouldn't really get a good picture but using percents we can do a comparison so a few things should jump out at you and one of the things that should jump out of you is in general between 
the the three different categories of wine other seems to be purchased most often unless french music is playing and when french music is playing more french wine was purchased the other thing that should jump out at you is that Italian wine was purchased the least frequently, but especially when the French music was playing. There may be other great observations that you can make, but those are some of the ones that just jump, jump out at the beginning of our, our analysis superficially. So go ahead and pause the video and read through the, the notes that are on the bottom of the screen and then turn the video back on when you're ready to proceed. So once again, we know that we could do a detailed analysis of a comparison of two, but what we want to do first is an overall test to determine what the differences are, how great the differences are, is it statistically significant or not, assuming that the null hypothesis is true, and we're going to use chi-square for that. Once we do that, we can do a follow-up analysis on the on more specific uh, differences, but first we're going to start out with the chi-square overall test. Our hypotheses are going to be the null hypothesis. There is no difference in the distribution, and in this case of a categorical variable for several populations or treatments. So in our example for the wines, it's going to be there is no difference in the type of wine purchased uh, depending that whenever the different types of music is playing okay and then our alternative hypothesis is there is a difference so we do see a difference so there is an impact on the music that's playing and we're gonna put our observed counts or our what happened in our sample in a two-way table and then we are going to calculate our expected values we're gonna calculate our expected values and you're going to see exactly how it works, but it's going to basically be for for French when no music was playing, the row total, which is 99, times the column total, which is 84, divided by the grand total, which is 243. And that's going to be the expected for French none. Okay, we're going to calculate the expected counts for every single cell that you see. So we have three categories of music, three categories of wine, so we're going to have nine calculations that we need to do. Our totals for the rows and the columns should still end up the same that we have in the observed, and as well as the grand total. Okay, so here you can see the conditional distributions of each of the different treatments and what wine was, how much wine was purchased for each of the different types of treatment. So jot these down if you haven't already or haven't calculated them already and turn the video back on when you're ready to proceed. Here you can see some detailed instructions on how to find those expected counts and once again it's going to be row total times column total divided by grand total. That's going to give us over the long 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 term after many, many, many days of playing these different kinds of music uh, and 243 wine bottles were purchased, these are the values that we expect to see purchase when each of the different treatments is conducted if there's no difference. And remember, that's our null hypothesis, so we're always assuming the null hypothesis is true, so we assume that there's no difference. And now we're going to calculate the chi-square test statistic. We need to always check conditions. So random, because the treatments were assigned at random, the large sample size, we saw that the expected counts in our two-way table of expected were all at least five. And then we come to independent. And in this case, independent may or may not apply because people may be buying lots of bottles at the same time, and in that case, uh, they are not necessarily independent. We're going to proceed with caution, however, and we know we're going to expand the summation notation just as we did before, but this time we have two two-way tables. So this may remind you of when you learned how to deal with matrices back, way back in Algebra 2 or Algebra 2 honors, and you can in fact use the matrix function in your calculator to help you with the chi-square test statistic for the test of homogeneity and the test of independence, not goodness of fit. There is a goodness of fit feature in your calculator, but it's not super friendly, so you may as well just calculate that one by hand. It's about just as fast. So let's calculate our 
uh, our chi-square contribution for each one of these, just as it was before, we're going to do the observed minus the expected, square the difference, divide by the expected, and then we are going to sum all of those together until we end up with a grand total chi-square of 18.28 in this case. Remember that we will be interested in the different contributions that each of these cells, the combination of the wine and the music, made to the overall total. Our degrees of freedom is the next thing that we're going to need to know about. And so let's just go back one slide. You can see that we have three types of music and three types of wine. The way we're going to calculate degrees of freedom is going to be 3 minus 1, that's the number of columns, times 3 minus 1 for the number of rows. We never count the totals in those numbers. It's just how many different categories for each of the variables we have. So we end up with two minus two, or two times two, which is four degrees of freedom for this problem. Okay. After we find the chi-square value, the axis value, we're interested in the p-value, and that's so that we can compare it against our alpha. All right, you may want to pause the video and take notes on this. This gives you a little bit of the information kind of generically so that you can set up all of your chi-square tests appropriately for homogeneity. And you can compare this to your, your handout that I gave you for the test of homogeneity. The handout is a little bit more kind of fill-in-the-blank oriented. This is more of a description. Okay, so a continuation of our significance test. We calculated our chi-square test statistic. We ended up with 18.28. We look for the row for four degrees of freedom, and we find that our p-value is somewhere between 0 0.0025 and 0 0.001. And that we, we do that by finding the two values where our, between which our chi-square calculated value would fall. And we can see that regardless of exactly what it is, which we can, of course, find it in our calculator, we know that it is smaller than our alpha that we chose. So that means that we are going to reject the null hypothesis. And we conclude that the music that's playing does have an impact on what is purchased in the store. The next example that we're going to take a look at starts on page 706 in your textbook, so you may want to read that and then turn the video back on so that you can continue the example. So this example is all about determining whether or not there is a difference in opinion between cell phone users and landline users in their, demo, their uh, political leanings. And so we're going to perform a chi-square a test of homogeneity. Let's see. I'm trying to see exactly where it says it. In the in your book it says, do these data provide convincing evidence that the distribution of party affiliation differs in the cell only and landline user populations? Carry out a significance test at the alpha equals 0.05 level. So we're going to do that. Now notice that the very first thing that we did is we calculated the proportions of each of the different political leanings for cell phone users and then for landline users. And we have created this stacked bar graph. It's a relative, it's proportion, so it totals up to 100 in each case. And based on this display of the data, it doesn't look all that different between cell phone users and landline users. So that's just our, again, a superficial treatment. We need to conduct the hypothesis test to determine whether it is statistically significant, but off the top, it doesn't look too different. Here is our state where we give our hypotheses and then our alpha level. Next comes our plan. If conditions are met, we're going to perform the test for homogeneity. We calculate our large sample size so that we can make sure it meets that condition. They're all at least five. We also do the random check and the independent check with the 10% rule. And then we come to the do. We're going to expand that chi-square summation notation, we come up with a chi-square calculated value of 3.22, and then we use our calculator feature or the table in the back of the book to determine we have a p-value of about 20. And that is larger than 0.05, so that means that we fail to reject the null hypothesis, and we do not think there is a difference, so we think the null hypothesis is true. We're just about out of time, so we're going to have a part two to this video, and I'll see you when we get there.